evening, Jordan. Good evening, Chris. And good evening, TCS viewers, and welcome to our second annual Best and Worst of, basically, all camera gear. Yeah, camera, right? audio, video, cameras, the worst of, trends, Absolutely. you know, everything of, of 2014. 2014. Oh. <laughs> now, last year we got just slightly tipsy, but this year we are going to make it far more interesting. We're playing the gentleman's game of chess and the stakes are higher because, Jordan, what do you have in here? I have full shots of rum. Yes, rum. yikes. And I actually have full shots of Sambuca, which I hate, by the way. <laughs> I use it for cooking and flambeing. But for the TCS viewers at home, and to keep things, you know, opposite in color, I'm going to drink it. Oh, I'm not looking forward well, to it. You're taking the hit on that one. Anyways, let's get going with the first award. This is Best Lenses. Basically, these are the sharpest, most interesting optics you can get for the price. And what I found interesting was our top two are not original manufacturers. Yeah. All right, so number three, we've got the Canon 10 to 18, just over $300. Yes, it's plasticky, but it's also very light, very affordable, and it gave a beautiful wide angle range. It's actually quite sharp. It's got the STM motor. You cannot go wrong. We sold a ton of these things. Fantastic lens for video and still photography alike. Oh. Oh, look at that. A super telephoto from a third party manufacturer that's every bit as good as the first party options. And in some cases, it's even better. The Tamron 150 to 600, it's sharp, it's very cheap. It's actually surprisingly compact considering you're getting a 600 mil on this. And it's raised the bar for other third party manufacturers. Sigma's got a version coming soon. We'll see how it stacks up. But this is a fantastic optic for the price. <laughs> All right, now I know it's not as impressive as the lens that Jordan just showed you, but our best lens, number one of 2014, is the Sigma Art 50mm 1.4. Anything that Sigma's made with the Art badge has just been incredible. It's solidly built, it's fantastic value for the money. But here's the thing, this is the first time that I've seen hardcore professional users, loyal Nikon and Canon users, say that they'd rather have the 50mm 1.4 than their classic Canon and Nikon versions. And that, in my book, makes us the best lens of 2014. All right, so <laughs> the front guys, they go the one, like. Yeah, well, but you can go two on the first turn. How long has it been since you've played I chess? I have not played this in a decade. I'm gonna okay, win yes. so easily. Oh, I hate this stuff, man. You made your choice. Oh my. We couldn't do like snakes and ladders or something. Yeah, I huh? know, hey? So, so that guy can diagonal. And I don't have a queen anymore. And on that very positive note, let's go to our next subject category. We're talking about the best video cameras of 2014. Something very close to home for you, George. It's been actually a really interesting year. I'm looking forward to getting through this. Absolutely got go. some exciting cameras here. This is my number three choice for best video camera of 2014. It's the FS7 that's filming me right now. They took everything I loved about the F5, my favorite camera from last year, shrunk it down, I can throw it on my shoulder comfortably, and it shoots 4K right in the camera. It is the best bang for the buck in a cinema camera right now. You would be crazy to buy a C300 at this point. Okay, so first off, if you just bought a Canon C300, I'm so sorry, Jordan's drunk, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Number two, best video camera of the year, the Panasonic GH4, and for good reason. And you know, this is the exciting thing, mirrorless, this was the first to really take us into amazing video territory this year. 4K to the masses, you've got it internal. But more than that, the camera focuses amazingly fast, it handles really well, it's a great tool, you got XLR grips, they really did think this one out. The only thing that keeps this from being number one on the list, it doesn't have the best low light performance, and although Cine D is a nice profile, it's no S-Log. Well, thanks for all the spoilers there, Chris, ruining the surprise. The Sony A7S is my top pick for video camera of the year this year. And yes, the GH4 opened up 4K recording internally at a price point never before seen, but this has opened up an entirely new type of filmmaking. The low light capabilities of this camera mean whether you're a consumer or a professional, you need this if you wanna shoot in extreme low light. And the fact that it also has S-Log in it, the files are very easily adjustable, really sets it apart from any other camera on the market. Sorry, the sorry, I sorry, one sec. I just bleed you, you're gonna lose. I, I, We'll get through this. 
and look at that after. The interface on this is also fantastic. I love the feel of the controls on it. Battery life sucks a little bit, but that's the only flaw. And for that reason, A7S, my camcorder of the year. Camcorder. That's okay, you're drunk. Let's do more awards. <laughs> Next category, best of 2014 in the audio department. Because, of course, audio is very, very critical to the video making process. Absolutely. And we actually had a lot of people online saying, hey, yeah, we want to see best of audio. Yeah, so we took a poll on our it. Twitter fans. This was the choice for new category. There you go. So let's run through the audio. All right, so best of 2014 when it comes to audio is actually not a microphone. It's the Invisilav by Rode. You may have noticed watching our videos that we went from external clipped on labs to invisible labs. And that's thanks to this amazing rubber product. You wear it over the capsule against your body. Basically, it eliminates rubbing and lets you keep the Invisilav out of sight. Check it out. Ooh, there it is. Works fantastic. <laughs> All right, our second favorite piece of audio equipment this year is the Zoom H5. Now, the H6 came out last year. It's a wonderful audio recorder, but it did have six channels. And for a lot of use, unless it's you know higher end production or you need to pad your audio, it's a little bit excessive. This is the perfect little device for me. I get all the things I love from the H6. I get the control dials right on it, which are silent. But what's also nice is it gives me access to all of Rode's plug-on accessories. And there are some great mics in it. This shotgun, they do an XY microphone, an Omni. It's a great versatile device. If you're going to get one audio recorder, this would be my pick. So, best audio piece of equipment for 2014, number one is the Sony UWP-D11. We use it all the time. You've got one-touch auto scan for local clean frequencies. Can't be easier to sync up your mics. You've got digital boosting, which at this price point makes it fantastic value. You know, we used to use the Sennheiser G3. It was a tinny mic. Now that we use this, we have a mic that doesn't sound like a piece of shit. It's perfect for picking up Jordan's slurry voice right now. Mmm, after the fourth, it's actually quite pleasant. Check. And drink. Oh. Jack. All right, guys, it's what you've all been waiting for. It is time for Camera of the Year 2014. Woo, Camera of the Year! I'm putting, like, foley of people clapping underneath right now. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's going to be nice good because I'm the editor. Production value. Yeah. Number three on our list, the Nikon D750. This is a near perfect SLR. Great image quality, great handling, better battery life, tons of features thrown in. I even like the body with the carbon fiber. The lighter weight is fantastic. And this camera also shoots better video since the Canon 1DC. I mean, this camera is just the entire package and any features missing from it, well, 99.9% .9 of us don't really care about those. So I'm glad it's an SLR. I'm glad it's the Nikon D750 in my unbiased opinion. Funny that uh, I got the Pentax 645Z since video is honestly the only thing this thing can't do flawlessly. This is the most flexible medium format camera on the market. It's got a pretty respectable autofocus system, but the low light is the best I've ever seen from a camera in stills mode, including an A7S. Not only that, but this thing is bomb proof, the ergonomics are fantastic, and the shutter is the nicest shutter I've ever felt on a camera. I'm, I'm kind of tearing up. Just... <laughs> amazing. The number one camera of the year, in our opinion, is the Sony a6000. Controversial, I know. Keep in mind, I love the Pentax 645Z as a camera, but this thing is just so practical. It makes so much sense. It's popular, and we've been selling tons of them, and for good reason. The Sony a6000 gives you everything. It's small, great image quality, fast focusing, fast frame rate, feels great in the hand, has good lenses. I mean, this camera just fits so well into families, people traveling, professionals is a separate camera. Shut up, Jordan. <laughs> I don't mean it literally fits into families. <laughs> and here's the most important thing to me. The Sony a6000 is single-handedly leading the mirrorless revolution. This is the camera that's gonna take over small SLR cameras on the market. And for that, I think this is a huge winner.
All right, so let's take a look at our favorite trends mm. in photo and video from 2014. For sure. And definitely the biggest one, I would say, is mirrorless coming into its own. Both, you know, really kind of filling out the lower end of the market, but also we saw a bunch of professional mirrorless cameras. Yeah, I mean, you've got professionals using the A7R for landscape. You've got pro videographers using the A7S. I mean, this is mirrorless cameras coming to the own, and it doesn't end there. xt one is very popular. Mm -hmm. I mean, the EM1 is great for sports and action. We're really seeing this huge revolution. Yeah, when the mirrorless first came out, I mean, we were both pretty early saying this is the future of photography. Absolutely. But it seemed like it always kept itself at the lower end of the market. Now we're seeing it where it should be, kind of at the mid-range. And very quickly, I think we're going to see a mirrorless equivalent to something like the 1DS or... Sure, yeah. absolutely. I mean, the fact is I've switched over and I know a lot of other people have switched over. Yep. I think we've got a solid case now for, you know, the demise of SLRs yep. at the expense of mirrorless taking over the market. I think so too. Okay, so that brings us to our second topic, mm -hmm. and really it's based off the first one, the convergence of video and stills. Yeah, this is huge. I mean, anybody who's becoming a professional photographer mm -hmm. really has to consider becoming a professional videographer as well because the clients are asking for it. Well, what I find interesting is our number two and three best video cameras of the year are technically still cameras in terms of the form and the build quality, mm -hmm. but it really emphasizes what we're starting to see. You need one device that can do two jobs. I'm tired of dragging mm -hmm. two cameras around. Now, if one is a beautiful camera like the FS7, I can deal with it, but well, when I need to travel light, why bring two around? Why give away half of the work that you could be doing for a client to somebody else if you could just do it yourself? And our successful photographers in the store, we see it at the store level yep. all the time, they're now picking up video cameras, picking up video gear, learning the tools of the trade, and doing very well. I told my students about it all last night. It's a big deal if you want to become successful in today's market. So that brings us to one of our favorite trends of the year, and that is drones and gimbals, two very exciting advancements in technology. Yeah, the things that excited me the most this year actually weren't cameras at all, hmm. or lenses, or anything I usually get worked up about. It was the camera movement that's available with these two new tools. For like, sure. When we shot our drone video, I went in, you know, a little wary of it. I'd hired drone operators before. But, but we got like three solid hours of beautiful, glorious, Hollywood-looking footage before we crashed it in the river. So maybe and those got, people are valuable still. Yeah, and you got another couple hours of beautiful footage before Levi Hallwell crashed it into a hill. So the fact is, before you crash them, these are effective, powerful tools. Yeah, the look that you get off them is amazing. And that goes to the gimbals as as well. This is a new sure. tool. They came out last year, the Movi, but they were really inaccessible for, you know, lower budget filmmaking and things like that. But the Ronin that we used was quite reasonable. Fantastic. Works with most cameras out there, and I've been using it constantly in camera store TV. I mean, it's quick to set up, and the look of it is really beautiful. dynamic and different from anything I've this been able to shoot before. This is what you got to remember: is in the past, and not even that long ago, you're talking tens of thousands of dollars hiring people outside of your firm just to get these kind of movements, and now you can buy it yourself, do it yourself, and get beautiful production. I'm value. unbelievably awkward, and I can use both of these tools. Oh, and this, Jordan, my friend, is checkmate, which means you have to drink of your king's sweet, sweet nectar. <laughs> there you go. And you know what? This is a good time to, an apt time, to go into worst products of the year, cameras, audio. I want you to drink all the rest of those while we talk about this. <coughs> All right, so Jordan, you wanted to start this off. What's the worst piece of audio gear? I mean, there's worst pieces of audio gear, but mm. I want to send a message to Rode because their video might go. I mean, it's an okay microphone, sure. but it's a $100 microphone, you know, yeah. nothing too impressive. But the packaging on this thing is peppered with Canon DSLRs all over it, which have preamps, yeah. and this thing has no amp. So unless somebody's standing in front of the camera screaming at you, if you <laughs> use this on a 5D yeah. or a 7, 7D, it's going to sound off. I mean, okay, the audio quality is good out of the mic, but what we're really crapping on is just unpowered mics in general yeah. marketed towards DSLR users. You're going to get terrible hiss, tons of background noise. It's just no good. Yeah. Get preamps in your mics, spend the extra money. Get a good video mic pro. Come on, people. All right, so number three, worst camera of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it to the DJI 
Vision Plus camera on the yeah. Vision 2. And you know, you may not have even heard of this camera, but this is the camera that's built in to the DJI helicopters, you know, mm -hmm. the, the, the drones. Everybody should be using GoPros on these things with what? gimbals because the Vision, it just has poor compression. You fly over a landscape and just everything shimmers. It's, it's a garbage. totally over sharpened image. Yeah. Off of. It's an inexpensive way to really enjoy shooting, but the quality that comes back is that's terrible. That's the problem. So there's a silver lining though, and that's mm. that DJI seems to recognize that the camera is yeah. actually an important port part and part in part and part it's an important part <laughs> of a camera and so what they did is they put on a camera in the inspire that gives us flat profile beautiful quality they have learned from their mistake yeah but yeah if you're going to use a vision plus don't use a gopro instead and save yourself the hassle well spoken drink it <laughs> okay the second worst camera of the year, in my opinion, Ugh. is Canon's G1X Mark II. I want to tear this apart because, <laughs> frankly, like the image on it, it's a really big imaging circle. So the quality should be really good. I expected this camera to do beautiful SLR quality. It slow has focusing. outdated slow focusing. The video on it is terrible, frankly. Um, but more than that, we would expect very shallow depth of field with the big sensor and very good low light performance. Mm -hmm. But like there's smaller cameras like the RX100 Mark III um, and especially the LX100 yeah. that have just come out, which I mean, are every thing. bit as small, but the image quality is so much more compelling off of I these I mean, that's things. the thing. These cameras almost made it into our list of top cameras of 2014 because they're so yeah. good. They're so small. They're fast. They've got great low light performance, great manual controls. You know, when we reviewed the G1X, just because of its slightly bulkier size, and, you know, we just kind of felt it didn't fit anywhere. It's but, like, yeah. you can get smaller and better, or you can get larger and better. Why go to this absolute piece of dog I feel so bad for this camera, doing this to this camera. Why? It's, it's awful. The, it's the Pentax KS1. And you know, for me, why I think this camera is so awful is because frankly, you probably haven't even heard about it. Nobody has bought it. Nobody cares about it. Why did they make it? Okay, so when I think of Pentax, there's a few things that jump into my mind. Right. Rugged build quality. Great dynamic range. Beautiful image quality. Excellent handling. Yes, and good value for the money. Yeah. Those are the Pentax standards. This has none of them. It it's has not well flushing <laughs> LEDs, that's it. Check this out. I'm gonna go to self timer. There you go. That's where your money's going, flashing LEDs. Nobody cares. On top of that, a very weird interface with tiny buttons. The camera has no weather sealing, which is a hallmark of Pentax cameras. Yeah. And let me point out that this costs substantially more than a Pentax K50, yeah. which gets you weather <laughs> sealing, great manual controls, yes. and more dynamic range, and no flashy blinky lights. No flashy blinky lights. <laughs> exactly. Or you can get the K500, yeah. which is essentially the same camera, and then you're paying like 300 bucks. It's yeah. insane. So where does the KS1 belong? Nowhere. I feel so bad. I'll tell though. you where it belongs as the worst camera of the year. Now please keep in mind, we gave the 645Z its kudos. Pentax, Rico are the only company that could possibly <laughs> screw up this bad in one area and then do so good in another. All right, so we had a great evening. I got to win at chess, that was a bonus, and I hope that you all at home had a really good time enjoying this video. You know, it was a very interesting year, 2014, in the camera business, and we're very eager to see 2015 come around. Check out our new videos next year. We hope you guys all have a happy holiday, and also remember, you can find us on Instagram, you can talk to us directly on Twitter, we actually answer back, and of course, subscribe, we deserve it. So, Chris Nichols from The Camera Store, and my lovely co-host, Jordan Drake, there he is. We're wishing you guys a great new year and we'll see you next year.